Did you know? Paper Mario was originally unveiled as Super Mario RPG 2 at Nintendo's Space World 97 event. Super Mario RPG 2 was being developed by Intelligent Systems, but the game's prequel, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, was developed by Square. It's thought that complications with Square is what led to Super Mario RPG 2 being renamed. Since Square developed Mario RPG, it's likely they had some ownership of names, assets, designs, and ideas they contributed to the game. That said, Nintendo might not have planned to call the game Super Mario RPG 2 outside of Japan anyway. Reports from English-speaking publications in 1998 specifically refer to the game as Super Mario Adventure. The game was eventually renamed internationally to Paper Mario, and was renamed Mario Story in Japan. The name Mario Story may have been chosen to align the game more with Yoshi's Story, which had a similar art direction. Super Mario RPG 2 might not have been the game's original title either. The initial idea for Paper Mario's art style came from an image made by artist Naohiko Aoyama, which was labeled Mario RPG 64. Intelligent Systems was struggling to create a game that would match the quality of the Nintendo 64's flagship Mario game, Super Mario 64. This was partly because Nintendo wanted to come up with something that looked and felt completely different from the main Mario series. Intelligent Systems project manager Kenji Nakajima said in an Iwata Asks interview that coming up with Paper Mario was indeed a challenge. After it was decided that Intelligent Systems would make a second Super Mario RPG, we ran into trouble deciding how it should look in order to bring out a different theme than in the main series. We couldn't determine the route to take with visuals. At first, we broke into teams and worked in parallel on making about three sample models. While the teams were busy working, Aoyama had plenty of free time on his hands. He came up with a concept image that was made up of 3D polygons, but had paper-thin 2D characters and background elements, giving it the atmosphere of a picture book. During that same Iwata Asks interview, Aoyama said, While the design remained undecided, I naturally spent a lot of time waiting. Then during that free time, casually from my own interest and totally apart from the course the team was taking, I made a rough image. I hoped it would somehow serve as a kickoff point and submitted it. Then they called me to a planning meeting and said, Bring back that picture. Aoyama figured that because there was a trend of realistic 3D graphics and home consoles during the mid to late 90s, it would be interesting to use 3D to emphasize a 2D appearance. And so Intelligent Systems and Nintendo ended up basing the entire game and series on something a new designer made for fun. Paper Mario was slated for release on the Nintendo 64 disk drive, but the disk drive ended up being a huge commercial failure. There were only a handful of games released for it, and any games planned for the disk drive were reworked as cartridge titles or cancelled entirely. Paper Mario ultimately saw a successful release as a regular N64 game, and was a top seller in Japan, moving more than 276,000 copies in its first week. It was also the last Mario game published for the Nintendo 64 in Australia, while in the rest of the world the last Mario game published for the N64 was Mario Party 3. Shigeru Miyamoto was a consultant on Paper Mario, and at the time stated that it was being developed with amateur gamers in mind. Miyamoto said, I think Super Mario RPG 2 will be the game that's friendly for game beginners and amateur players to start out with. As you can see in Yoshi's story, the idea of the three-dimensional picture book will appear in Mario RPG. Some outlets such as RPG Fan questioned the naming of the game, stating that it didn't really take advantage of the paper aesthetic enough to justify calling it Paper Mario. There are several interesting regional differences between the Japanese and English releases of Paper Mario. In the Japanese game, the party character Watt is consistently implied to be a girl. In the English release, however, Watt is referred to as both a she and a he. This seems to be a mistake by the English localization staff. Watt uses baby talk in the Japanese game and usually refers to themselves by name instead of using pronouns. Watt also avoids using male or female speech indicators in their dialogue. This ambiguity likely led to the inconsistent gender labels in the English game. It's also possible that Watt's blue pacifier, a color normally associated with male babies in the West, influenced the localization team's perception of Watt. This error was repeated in the English version of Super Paper Mario, where Watt's catch card says, This guy was pretty bright for his age. Twink's name is also different in the Japanese game. They're called Tinku in Japan, which is likely a reference to the Peter Pan character Tinker Bell, who is often referred to by the nickname Tink. What makes this reference more plausible is that Mario's creator, Shigeru Miyamoto, is also a known fan of Disney's Peter Pan. The responses to Chuck Quizmo's questions also vary slightly between regions. The 60th question in the quiz asks, what best describes the relationship between Mario and Luigi? With the possible answers being brothers, friends, or neighbors. However, in the Japanese game, the possible responses are brothers, friends, or lovers. 
The Lovers option was changed in the English release for obvious reasons. The Japanese name for Forever Forest is Mayoi no Mori, which translates as Lost Forest. In Japan, the same name is used for the Forest of Illusion from Super Mario World, as well as the Lost Woods from the Legend of Zelda series, making the area a possible reference to both. The Japanese game also loosely references real areas. The Dry Dry Ruins area is called the Arabian Ruins, which is an allusion to the Arabian Peninsula. Speaking of Dry Dry Ruins, the name of Maustafa's alter ego Sheik seems to be a nod to Zelda's alter ego Sheik from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Both characters are royals who hide their true identities, and when Gumbario uses Tattle on Maustafa after his reveal, he says, da 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 which is the effect that plays when obtaining a treasure in the Zelda series. This is not the character's only reference. Maustafa's original Japanese name is Lawrence, which may be a nod to the 1962 film Lawrence of Arabia. That was set in the Arabian Peninsula during World War I, and was based on real-life stories surrounding British military officer T.E. Lawrence. This game is just full of easter eggs and references. Luigi keeps a diary in a secret basement under Mario's house. Naturally, the player can go down there and read it. In one entry, Luigi mentions that he is afraid of ghosts, and wants to be the main lead in his own game. This heavily foreshadows the first Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, which was being developed at the same time as Paper Mario. His diary also references Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, and Mario Party, saying, I remember the carefree days when we played golf and tennis and had parties. This is not the only secret inside a house. If Mario goes to Koopa Village and stands on a table while talking with Mort T, he reminds Mario that it's rude to climb on tables. Several Paper Mario characters have references within their names. Chuck Quizmo's assistant, Vanna T's name, is not just a pun on the word vanity, but is also a reference to Vanna White from the game show Wheel of Fortune. Kino Pico is Vanna T's Japanese name, which is Toad's name with the female suffix ko attached. Adding ko to a name is similar to adding et to the end of a name in English. This ko suffix was also used for Toadette in Japan, resulting in the two characters sharing a name. Because of this, there is an error in the German version of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, where Toadette is incorrectly given Vanity's name, T. Tanya. At the Toadtown docks, a character named Fishmail can be found. His name likely references Ishmael, a sailor and the narrator of the book Moby Dick. The name of the famous novelist in Shiver City, Herringway, is a pun on herring fishes and Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway is known for his novels, which includes works such as For Whom the Bell Tolls. Interestingly, Chapter 4 in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is similarly named For Pigs the Bell Tolls. The area Gusty Gulch may also be based on the real Spanish region La Mancha. La Mancha is an elevated and somewhat arid plain that's scattered with windmills. Gusty Gulch is also an elevated semi-arid area that prominently features a windmill. Adding to this, Gusty Gulch's background music seems to use traditional Spanish instruments, such as castanets and a dulcina. Paper Mario has some interesting unused features as well. There was once an Anger's Power Badge in earlier builds of the game. The badge would cause Mario to turn a dark reddish color and pose angrily. It would also make Mario uncontrollable by the player, and he would blindly attack in battles, though Mario's partner could still be controlled. Mario's attack power would increase, but the AI neglects common sense. For example, jumping on top of spiky enemies. The unused badge in Mario's animations can still be found by hacking the game. Paper Mario also has several unused enemies. Although albino dinos appear in the Crystal Palace, they are never fought. But you can fight them by hacking the game, since they do have battle properties. Their AI is minimal, as the dinos will simply ram into Mario for their attack. Wacka also has battle data attached to him, implying that he was going to be fought. Perhaps this would have taken place after the player hits Wacka eight times, which is where he snaps and decides to leave. The game also contains an unused variant of the Dark Koopa enemy that can fly. They can also be fought with the use of cheat codes, which reveals they are essentially stronger versions of the regular paratroopas. Other unused enemies include a Red Goomba and a Flying Red Goomba, not to be confused with the Red Goomba mini-boss fought in Prologue. There's also an Aqua Fuzzy, which looks like the normal fuzzies, just with a blue color palette. Maybe this was the original rendition of the Jungle Fuzzy, which ended up being yellow in the official release of the game. Did you know that McDonald's used to purposely space their chairs apart so that people would talk less and eat faster? 
For more food facts, check out the new channel Did You Know Food. If you want to learn more about Paper Mario and its many intricacies, feel free to check out my channel, Strider7x. And I also just want to give a quick verbal shout out to The Cutting Room Floor and its contributors for their continued efforts to discover unused content in video games. It's really cool work, thank you guys.